Perfect. All right, everybody, what's going on? And welcome to today's edition of Swag Talk. Of course, this is the show. We cover the swag inside and out. And I'm your tour guide around the swag. See Wells coming at you. And today is Tuesday, which means it's our HBCU top 10. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the uh, point spreads um, for this upcoming week. And um, that's, that's, that's our show for the day. That's our Tuesday show, point spreads and polls. That's what we do. Um, we're also going to probably try to touch on uh, the Swag Basketball Media Day sometime this week, maybe early next week. Um, that, that's taking place this week. Um, Women's Media Day is today. Men's Media Day is tomorrow, which is Wednesday. So we'll try to talk about that a little bit as well. But, you know, we're in football season, so we're going to focus on football. Um, you get those socials to get um, to get the weekly schedule. Um, Tuesday is the HBCU Top 10 slash point spread show. Uh, Wednesday is our weekly preview for the upcoming week. Thursday is Swag Smoke Live, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. And Sunday is our uh, weekly recap of the past week's action. So this week is week six. So we're going to preview week six on tomorrow. And Sunday we'll recap all the games from week six. We are in conference play. So all, all games are conference games that actually count in the standings. So, you know, that there's five games on the schedule. All five count for the SWAC standings, and that's that's where we're at. Um, also, just a little quick housekeeping note i like to point out. Uh, obviously, this is October. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and my wife, she sells jewelry for Park Lane Jewelry. So if you're interested in supporting breast cancer awareness, um, they have a Hope necklace that can be purchased for $20 with the minimum purchase and 20% goes directly to breast cancer research. So that's always a good cause. Uh, also, you can uh, su support the channel by subscribing. Uh, we're over 1,100 subscribers. Um, if you'd like to become a member of the channel, you can hit that join button. Um, if you would like to just show, you know, show a little bit of love and donation to the channel without committing to being a member, um, you can always hit the cash app, dollar sign, swag talk. Um, anything is always appreciated. Um, like the video, share it, and feel free to comment your thoughts on the on this top ten. I mean, everybody got top tens now. I, I got mine. You know, you can agree, you can disagree. Just give your thoughts in the in the, in the uh, in in the comments, and give me a good reason why you don't agree, not just because your team is ranked lower than this team or whatever. You know, put a little thought into it. But and let's go ahead and jump directly into this top ten heading into week six. Um, little flip flop. From my number one and two teams, um, I jumped North Carolina Central back up to number one. Um, they were number two on set um, last week, but I jumped them back up to number number one from number two. Primarily, not I don't really punish FAMU for playing that for for the Valley game being um, being the score that it was. I mean, they you know they 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 had a rough kind of go of it, but they took care of business in the second half. And scored three touchdowns, but I rank Central better because I feel like that win over Campbell um, carries a little bit more, um, a little bit more weight to it at this point. Um, obviously, when you beat a team like that, you know that that can go a long way in helping your season and helping you with you know a non-conference win. Um, you had to come from behind in that game. Um, you looked like you were out of it, came back and won that game um, in overtime, 49-48. So. For that for that reason, I bump I bump Campbell. I mean I bump Campbell. I bump, I bump Central back up to um to the number one spot from the number two spot. Uh, FAMU, they dropped that one spot. Um, like I said, I'm, I don't necessarily punish FAMU for beating Valley by the score that they beat them. Um, I just give Central a little bit more credit for beating Campbell um, because to me that's 
a better opponent. So they those two teams flip flop. Uh, Hampton is moving up the is moving up the rankings, man. They're moving up pretty well. But before we get into that, uh, Central is at Elon this week, and our uh, fan you is at Southern. So both, again, two games that can kind of impact that that number one and number two spot. And I got a feeling them two teams are gonna battle it out for that that one spot for a long time. But Hampton is is, is looking good right now too. Um, big big win for for the Pirates. Um, this past weekend, um, they moved to three and one on the season, and they move up to the number three spot um, as they beat Richmond by a score thirty one to fourteen, and they control that game. They they basically uh, led their game seventeen to nothing at the half. Um, gave up a touchdown in the third quarter, but scored two two touchdowns in the fourth quarter to put that game away. Uh, you know you. That's a big that's a big road victory for Hampton. And Hampton's a team who coming into the season, I didn't really expect a lot from, but they've been playing really well in uh pre- playing really really well this season. And like I said, you gotta reward teams for non-conference victories. Um, especially where well, that's a conference victory in their in their um in, in in their situation. But you gotta, you know, you gotta respond uh you gotta kinda, you know, reward teams for playing well and, and picking up a, a victory in the Colonial, which a lot of people felt like the Coastal Colonial, whatever it is, um, in the CAA. Um, a lot of people felt like Hampton may not even win a game in conference, and they were able to uh, win their first conference game of the season. So, you know, that that that's, you know, you have to reward that, and that, that's a big a big win in that aspect, that 3-1. and one, um, Really could be 4-0. Oh. Um, lost, only loss was to Howard. So, you know, they really could be 4-0. But um, they, you know, they find themselves in, in a pretty good spot um, with, you know, with some, with some momentum ahead of them. I mean, excuse me, their only loss was to Norfolk. They beat, Ham- they beat Howard, lost to Norfolk. Um, but that's a game you probably still should have won. So, you know, this team could easily be the number one team right now. Um, but they're, you know, they're sitting, they're sitting in a good spot right now. Um, they play Campbell. Um, at home this week uh, in in CAA action, uh, Jackson State was off last week. Um, by virtue of that, I kept them at number five. Um, they're three and two. Uh, they play Alabama A and M on Saturday. That's a big game. Um, before the season started, didn't really seem like that big of a game, but now uh, and going now at week six, this is a big game for both teams. And we'll talk about that game in more in depth when we get to our, our weekly preview. Um, you know, like like I was told, you know, when you drop a team when they when they off, it's kind of like firing somebody on their day off. So you know, I don't want to fire nobody on their day off. So if if at all possible, I, I want to try to hold teams um, to 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 the spot that they're in if they're off. Now, if somebody has a great win, then I'm gonna jump that team. Uh, if somebody ahead of them loses, then I'm probably gonna bump them up. But for the most part, you want to try to hold teams steady. Um, when they're off, and and that's what JSU is at that point. Uh, Tennessee State dropped from three to six um, by virtue of losing at UT Martin. Now the game, that game, um, as far as the informal spread goes, um, that game had a a really a really huge uh, point spread in you know in our 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 little point spread system. But the uh, the Tigers only the Tigers lost that game uh, twenty to ten on the road, so. Not a bad, not a bad loss per se. Um, I mean, UT Martin's a, a really good team, um, so it's not, it's, you know, it's not a, a, it's not a horrible loss. But you know, with that, with them losing and a couple of teams winning, um, you kind of, you kind of, you know, you kind of have to fall somewhere, and uh, that's that's pretty much where they fell. I mean, UT Martin's four and one right now, and so that's a. Uh, a, a big, uh, you know, that's not a bad loss. I mean, it's a conference loss that always hurts, but you know, they I dropped them from three to six. I mean, Hampton won. Um, ooh, I, ooh, ooh. How the hell did I skip number four, man? Y'all, <laughs> please don't kill me, man. <laughs> this, it, this is very unintentional, man. Number four is Groundland. I know y'all gonna see my southern shirt thing. I drop, I skipped Groundland on purpose, but the Tigers, man, they they picked up a big victory in the State Fair Classic. Over Purview and they're f- number four, jumping up from number six. Um, 
big victory. Gremlins, you know, all, all, all the jokes aside, man, Gremlins playing some good football right now. Um, the offense is looking good. Defense has gotten better week by week. Um, a lot of people feel like Prairie View had a chance to win that game. I picked Prairie View to win that game. Uh, Grambling, basically, they controlled that game for, for long stretches, and, and they won that game going away. Uh, Grambling right now is the team, you know, is the, is they're in, I don't want to say they're in the driver's seat in the West yet because there's so much football left to be played, but they are walking toward the driver's side door right now. But they're not in the seat yet, but they're getting there. Uh, they're playing well. Um, and, you, you know, you have to reward a team for beating a team who was ranked in, in my poll. So, Gremlin moves up from six to four. Um, and, you know, they're, 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 looking, up, they're looking really good. Um, they go to Alcorn on Saturday, so that's another West Division matchup. Um, but, you, you know, Miles Crawley's looking good. The running game, Chalk and uh, Williams looking good. The receivers are playing well defensively. Um, they're, they're playing a lot better. You know, they did a solid job against Prairie View defensively on Saturday. So um, that's why they're number four. Um, I jumped them from four, from uh, from six to four, um, primarily because Hampton won and Tennessee State lost. So um, kind of moved some things around. And like I said, Tennessee State, they play Kennesaw State on Saturday. Um, so we'll see if the Tigers can maintain their position. Um, again. Didn't didn't skip Gremlin on purpose, man. I I know I, I know a lot of people ain't gonna believe that, but I didn't I I, I didn't do that on purpose. But um, had to go ahead and get that right. Uh, number seven, Alabama and them they defeated Tuskegee on Saturday by wow, a big blowout. You know, I mean that that was a you know a, a big a big rivalry type game for the Bulldogs, a homecoming affair, and uh, they came out and took care of business, fifty eight to three. Um, Dave. Outscored their uh, F their their D two opponents by a score one hundred and nine to sixteen. So they are scoring a lot of points against the team that they need to. Um, you know they other than that, you know they they had an FBS game and two swag games with their one and one in conference. Um, still don't fully know what this team is, but you know they're showing some good signs. Quincy Casey is is playing well in the offense. The running game is playing well defensively. Um, they're playing well right now in 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 in, a, in certain aspects. But you know, we will find out a lot more about this team on Saturday against Jackson State. But they're three and two. Um, they moved up from number nine to number seven in my poll. Um, those two D two wins they they don't they don't hurt a lot, but they don't help a lot either. So you know, we'll like I said, now that they're gonna be in conference play from now on. Um, we'll really know what this team is, but being able to put that kind of points on two teams at home, um, it never hurts, um, especially when you're looking for some kind of momentum offensively and it's there. So now we can kind of see where this team really is um, as we move forward. Uh, number eight is Howard. Um, they moved up um, from number 10. Uh, they picked up a victory over Robert Morris on Saturday. Um, so. They uh, 35 to 10 victory over Robert Morris on the road. So nice victory for the Bison. Um, and they they have moved up two spots from 10 to 8. Um, they go to Northwestern on Saturday. So they have an FBS match up here. Um, you know, that they you know, we'll see, you know, if, if the Bison can kind of grind out a game against Northwestern, who is not of, uh, uh, who's not that good of a team. I mean, they're a power five team, but they're not that good. Um, but we'll see what uh, what Howard does. Um, number nine, um, I put Southern. Um, Southern jumped back into the poll at number nine. Um, good defensive game for Southern on Saturday against Pine Bluff. Um, shut them out, six sacks, four turnovers. Um, didn't really ever allow the Golden Lions to get in the rhythm of offense. Offensively, the best half that Southern's played all season uh, offensively was the first half this week. Um, Twenty points in the first half, only scored seven in the second. Had a had a you know had a bad turnover. Had a turnover on downs. Um, Pine Bluff kind of stood up a little bit on on defense in the second half, but um, Southern's defense never let them get into any kind of rhythm to make that a game. But um, Southern being able to 
um, win on the road and, and score some points and run the ball in this game are uh, positives. Uh, still a lot of work ahead of Southern. Um, they're nowhere near a finished product. Um, they have a huge test on Saturday um, against FAMU. So you're, you're, you know, Alabama a and and Pine Bluff, you know, those are two teams who can, you know, you can kind of go back and forth on what they really are. But you'll really know what Southern is on Saturday because they're playing probably the best team in the league on Saturday. Um, and that's, you know, that's a tough test. Can Southern be consistent enough to keep themselves in that game? No, we don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that on the preview. But they jumped in from uh, unranked to nine, uh, primarily because, um, you know, some teams lost ahead of them. And, you know, they, I, I moved some people up. Uh, Prairie View finishes our top ten. At number ten, uh, they're two and three. Uh, like I said, they lost to Gramlin on Saturday. Uh, this team can score points, but they give up a lot of points. And that's why I'm not quite sure how good the Panthers are. I mean, you know, they, they've given up a lot of points and yards through the air to everybody they've played. Um, the running game has not been as great as I thought it would be, but the passing game has been, um, has kind of picked them up a little bit. Um, they still, you know, they still have some issues that they got to work out. Um, that grounding game was a big game, but they're still in the mix in the division. Um, they're two and three right now, and they were my number 17. I didn't know my number 10 team. They have Valley on Saturday. Um, Valley's been a throwing in Prairie View side the last two years. You know, I don't know if this Valley team got it in them, especially on the road. But, you know, that's never a game that you can overlook, especially coming off of the last two seasons that Valley's beat you. Um, but this team, you know, this could be what they need to kind of get themselves on track and, and, and find a way to get themselves back in the hunt. So the Panthers round off my top ten. Um, Alcorn is, is, is um, my, I guess you could say my number 11 team. Uh, they beat Alabama State by a score of 23 to 20 in overtime on Saturday. Um, they lost to Prairie View 23 to 20 the week before. And that's really the only reason why I don't have Alcorn as my number 10 team because I could put them there. But I do, I do think uh, head to head is, is valuable when, when at all possible. Um, you got to reward teams for beating teams. And Prairie View beat all corn, so that's why they're number 10 in all corn. kind of my number 11 team. Uh, Norfolk State, they lost to North Carolina A&T on Saturday, so they dropped out of the poll, but they're 2-3. and three. Uh, A&T is 1-3. and three. Uh, They picked up their first victory of the season Saturday. Um, they played Villanova on Saturday, so maybe, you know, they can find a way to kind of put some things together and get themselves ranked. Or oh, they're kind of sick where they at. Uh, South Carolina State is 1-3. and three. Um, and Bethune Cookman is one and three. So not a lot of, you know, to me, not a lot of teams really worthy of being in the top ten. You know, that cutoff to me at this point is no worse than two and three. Um I, I can't rank anybody one and three right now. Um so right now there's only twelve teams for ten spots. Um and that'll start to shake out some more um as we move into conference play. Uh, to me X has a couple weeks before they get get in the conference play, so still a lot left to be determined by them out of conference. But that's our top 10 for now. Um, like I said, still a lot of juggling, but Gremlins, Gremlins probably one of the highest jumpers um, in, in, in the poll. If you look at it, um, they were unranked in week, uh, they were unranked after week four. Um, they jumped to number six after week five and not at number four. So if they can continue to win, they'll climb. You know, I mean, they, they like I said, they're not in the driver's seat yet, but they walk in the ward, the driver's side door um, in the in the West Division, and they, they are playing some good football, so um, you got to reward them for that. Uh, looking at the point spreads for this week's games, again, entertainment purposes only. Um, I put it out there, what you do with it is what you do with it. Uh, Alabama a and is an eight-point underdog to Jackson State in Mobile in the Gulf Coast Challenge. Uh, over under 54 and a half. This is a very intriguing game. Uh, and ms offense has looked really good against their 2D2 opponents. They they look pretty solid against Pine Bluff. Um, early turnover, but they look pretty solid against Pine Bluff. Um, Quincy Casey has been playing well. Um, he's, he's moving the ball through the air really well the last few weeks. The running game has started to come back in the form. Uh, defensively, they've been pretty solid. 
Uh, JSU has had their ups and downs this season. Uh, obviously, the special teams uh, issues, um, the depth that's at special teams spots. Uh, the offense is really strong running the ball. Uh, the passing game has kind of not been that great uh, defensively. They, you know, they've been pretty solid. Um, these two teams are kind of even statistically, and like I said, we'll talk about that on on our week week six preview. But I don't really have a big problem with this spread. Um, don't really know what a and is. This is going to be a good test for them. Um, the only other game they really played against a team who may be even comparable is Southern, and their offense didn't look that good in that game. And that was, you know, Quincy Casey got to start late. You know, the running game didn't get going in that game. So we'll see how they do. But eight points is not not a bad a bad spread for that game. Um, Bethune Cookman is a half a point underdog at Alabama State. Um, they will be favored. They will be favored at home against Alabama State. Looking at that spread, uh, when you know when you figure you get three points for home field, so they will probably be a two and a half point favorite at home against Alabama State. I I know Bama State's not looking that good offensively, but I I, I you know I I think you know the Hornets should be favored by a little bit more at home. I mean, if only because of their defense. Um, this offense for Alabama State just still hasn't really put it together at all. Um, last week they played two quarterbacks. You know they ran the ball really well against uh, Alcorn, but the passing game wasn't that. They fumbled the ball seven times, lost three of them. You know just. Continually shooting yourself in the foot offensively, um, just I don't really know. But Thune Cookman, they 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 played a really solid defensive game against Jackson State. Didn't really do a lot of offensively. They quarterback issues have been well known. Um, I think Alabama State's defense is enough to get them through this game. So I I do think Alabama State probably could be favored by a little bit more. But um, that's a kind of interesting spread over under forty six. Uh, Fam U is at Southern Rattlers favor by eight uh, over under 40 and a half. Both teams uh, defenses are, are strong. Um, Southern's offense is a bit more inconsistent than Fam U's. Uh, Jeremy Musa hasn't had the greatest season, especially not a season worthy of preseason player of the year, but he's got the explosive weapons. The running game, if they can get it going, is definitely is definitely possible. To take, you know, to be a, a factor in this game. Uh, Southern's offense, like I said, they're they're up and down. They hadn't really been able to run the ball before last week. Uh, turnovers have been their issue, but they, you know, you have to give credit for, you know, playing well even in a half. Um, but family was a tough test. I I I don't have a problem with an eight point spread at home um, against a team like Fam Fam U. That's to me not that big of a, a issue. Um, because I think FAMU, if they play the way that they've been playing, they could easily win that game by double digits. So Southern uh, underdog at home by eight is not bad. Uh, Gramlin is a two-point favorite uh, at all corn over under 54. Uh, you know, maybe that's because all corn's playing at home, but I, I think Gramlin's offense could easily make this spread be a little bit higher. But all corn is tough at, on the reservation. You know, I, that's not a gimme for Gramlin. Uh, this is going to be a tough test for all, for Gramlin. All corn's defense, you know, they, they gave up a lot of yardage to Alabama State on the ground, but their pass defense was solid. They have a strong pass rush. Um, all corn's passing game has been solid these last couple of weeks. Can they get their running game going? If they can do that, then, yes, they're going to give Gramlin some problems. Um I don't like I said, I don't want to crown Gremlin right now, but they are they are, you know, they're playing well right now, but they still have a lot of tough tasks ahead of them. Um all coins definitely gonna be one of them. Um I don't have an issue with Gremlin being favored in this game um at all. Uh the last sweat game we have is Purview favored by 14 and a half over over Valley. Um Valley's gotten blown out in in the last three games they played. I don't really see any reason why this should be different. Of course, as we know, Prairie View's been a thorn in uh, Valley's been a thorn in Prairie View side the last two years, but I don't see this Valley team being that team. And I think Prairie View will find a way to, you know, to kind of get themselves going. I think their running game will get going, and I think their defense will be able to get the stops they need in this game. And I, I think they could win this game by more than fourteen and a half. I think I think they could win this game by twenty plus. 
um, if they don't get in their own way. Um, Valley still got a lot, to, lot to improve on. Um, they still have some issues, um, and I think it's gonna be tough playing on the road. Um, they struggled away from home mightily, um, and I think Prairie will be able to. Uh, I think they'll be able to beat that spread honestly. Um, couple, um, couple other HBCU games of note. Uh, Elon is favored by ten and a half over Central. Um, Campbell's favored by three and a half over Hampton. Uh, Tennessee State is a, a four and a half point underdog to Kennesaw State. Uh, Villanova's favored by twelve over A and T. Uh, let's see. Is there anything anybody else we want to look at before we get out of here? Uh, Howard is a twenty six and a half underdog to Northwestern. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, let's do this. Yep. Uh, South Carolina State's favored by 43 and a half over Virginia Lynchburg. Um, you know, just wanted to throw that out there. Lynchburg is not good. Uh, and that that's pretty much it, man. Like I said, um, we're gonna have our week five, week six, week six preview coming at you on Wednesday. So make sure y'all catch that swag smoke live on Thursday, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, and uh week six recap coming at you on Sunday. So with that being said, I'm your tour guide around the swag. See what else coming at you. And we'll catch y'all on the rebound. Peace.